There's a lot of interest in myopia control at the moment, and I think as time goes by, it's going to transform the way we practice. So that instead of actually treating um, the, the, the symptom per se, just by correcting the refractive error, we're going to be uh, actually uh, attacking the disease condition. So this is a topic that uh, is uh, of uh, great interest uh, to many people in optometry nowadays. And you've probably heard about uh, some of the recent progress in this area. While myopia progression is a problem because of its inconvenience, um, the greater reliance on glass, etc., the real problem that we see is with regard to the development of diseases associated with higher amounts of myopia. Uh, choroidal neovascularization, is, uh, and, uh, otherwise known as myopic maculopathy, is probably the principal one that we need to be careful of. Because myopia rates have been increasing in recent years, we really are going to see an explosion of eye disease associated with, with higher amounts of myopia as time goes on. And we believe this is going to become a major health problem in the future. It, the condition may actually um, become one of the leading causes of irreversible blindness around the world as time goes on. There's no, no safe amount of myopia. Every single diopter increase, you're essentially doubling your risk. And this means we just want to keep people as low as we can. We want to implement procedures for slowing progression as best we can. In the future, I think it, it will be not just become common practice, but I think it'll become almost the, the standard of care that you, any person with uh, signs that they're going to go myopic should be offered some form of myopia control. This is a serious problem, and, and uh, the World Health Organization does not have the complications of myopia on its list of the 10 major priorities for eye disease at this stage. They're having a meeting in Sydney next month, which we think will generate it becoming one of those uh, uh, priority eye diseases. There are a number of uh, different ways that people are trying to uh, control myopia progression. Uh, in Southeast Asia, for example, uh, they're very interested in using atropine. Uh, People also use uh, multifocal spectacles to, to a certain extent as well. Uh, I think in the Western world, so United States and uh, uh, Europe for example, uh, we're much more likely to see contact lenses as the standard of care and there, there are two principal ways that people are approaching this. The first one is with orthokeratology and there's no question uh, that the data show that it is effective for slowing myopia control. And the second is with uh, soft multi-zone contact lenses. Uh, by and large, the uh, center of these lenses is good for distance vision. The periphery has some plus power in them. And these also have been shown in experimental trials to, to be effective at slowing myopia control. I've been fortunate enough that Johnson & Johnson have put me in charge of uh, developing a, uh, a myopia controlled product for them. But I do want to tell you right here at the beginning that this is not a, a presentation that's preempting some launch in the very near future, unfortunately. And it's going to be uh, a couple of years before uh, we're going to have a myopia product out there on the market, I'm afraid. The current treatments, both with soft lenses and orthokeratology, are generally giving uh, around about a 40% treatment effect, usually between 30% and 50% for up to one, maybe two years. Uh, this is certainly effective at reducing um, axial elongation, and axial elongation is uh, what we think is the major driver for some of the complications that we see associated with myopia. And if you reduce the rate by 33%, what effect do you get? This is a distribution of refractive errors. A 33% reduction, relatively modest, one third, will reduce the proportion of people that go greater than minus five by 73%. So I think um, as far as optometry goes, uh, myopia control is really the most interesting uh, development that, that's taking place right now. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of attention being paid to it already and we're getting a lot of interest from all around the place and I think all practitioners really um, owe themselves a favour if they're not considering it to uh, read about it, attend conference meetings about it, because as I said, I think this is really going to become the standard of care in the future.